are expecting a landslide victory. The people of Soweto have been standing in line since dawn, eager for a second taste of democracy. The queues may be long, but it's nothing like the historic but chaotic election five years ago. The delays now are administrative. For the first time, there's a multiracial voters' roll with 18 million names on it. The poor are still here to vote because they believe it means better lives. I hope the vote will bring a better future for my baby and my family. Through our vote, we want the government to improve our lives. Yeah, we want houses, we need jobs, there's a lot of crime. We need uh, electricity, water, jobs. Nelson Mandela's government may have largely failed to deliver the promised new jobs and new homes, but it did deliver democracy. It's a very wonderful occasion to be able to vote. Although I'm doing so for the second, uh, second time, it, uh, it gives me a wonderful feeling. But his expected successor, Tabo Mbeki, knows he will have to come up with the goods, better lives for all. The security forces are on patrol, but 1994's political violence has been replaced with growing political maturity. Although there was much more excitement last time, it really was a liberation election. This is a much more normal general election of the kind that we're familiar with. Despite the long hours of waiting, these South Africans are still enthusiastic about democracy. They're voting for only the second time in their lives. Many say they're prepared to queue into the evening, a tribute to how far South Africa has come. Jane Standley, BBC News, Soweto. Seven primary school children in the northeast of Scotland have been admitted. And Lord Wakeham went into session in London to consider a Buckingham Palace complaint that the Sun newspaper invaded Miss Rhys Jones's privacy by printing a photograph taken 11 years ago in Spain. A wave of anger led the Sun to make an apology the next day for upsetting Miss Rhys Jones, but the complaint for breaching the press code of practice went ahead. This afternoon came the verdict. It cannot be acceptable simply to break the code one day and apologize the next. The newspaper's apology in no way excuses the grave error which was made, nor lessens the distress which it caused Miss Rhys Jones. The decision to publish these pictures was reprehensible, and that such a mistake must not happen again. The palace says the issues raised have been resolved the Sun tonight apologised again, accepting it had broken the code of practice. The paper's decision to publish the topless picture infuriated the Queen and the rest of the royal family, and so did the original apology because of its jocular tone. Despite the Complaints Commission making stern noises, the whole matter's really ended in compromise, with the Sun producing its new and straightforward expression of regret. Nicholas Owen, ITN, at the Press Complaints Commission. The European Union has called for a ban on Belgian chocolates because of a contamination scare. Belgian eggs used in the production of some chocolate have been poisoned with a cancer-causing dioxin which got into chicken feed. European Union vets have ordered all chicken and eggs exported from Belgium since January to be destroyed. South Africans queued for hours today, just as they did five years ago, to vote in the country's general election. President Nelson Mandela won't be the winner this time. He's retiring. His chosen successor as leader of the African National Congress is Thabo Mbeki, and he could be on course for a landslide. ITN's Tim Ewart has been watching the voting. Democracy was a hard-won right in South Africa. This is the Alexandra Township in Johannesburg. People here intend to vote however long it takes. And in Alexandra, it took 10 hours to reach the front of this queue. Nelson Mandela waited a lifetime for democracy. At the age of 80, he was voting for just the second time today. He celebrated with a kiss for his new wife, Grasa Michelle. Thabo Mbeki will take over the presidency. His ANC party is heading for an overwhelming majority, but he's under pressure to deliver on reforms here. In the townships, voters want more rapid change in the post-apartheid era. We don't have water facilities. We don't have anything, you know. So crime is worse. Most whites now support opposition parties expected to get less than a fifth of the vote. 
but opposition leaders insist the political map will change again. I don't think the ANC's rule or grip is permanent. I think um, there are going to be changes within the ruling party. I think there are going to be changes in the opposition. And I think there's a new dynamic in the post-Mandela South Africa. But not yet. Tomorrow, it will be the ANC celebrating victory again. For these voters, the outcome is not in doubt. The only question here, will the quality of life improve under a new government? Tim at ITN, Alexandra Township, Johannesburg. A new era dawning for South Africa. Stay with us for more of the day's top stories, including... This is the election campaign that's never quite got off the ground. In the past, Europe has raised strong feelings amongst voters, but not, it seems, this time. A tribute, perhaps, to how well Labour has diffused the issue since they were elected. Labour's campaign has centred on the Prime Minister, out in South Wales today, and his record leading a party that is, in his words, at the heart of Europe. What is important for people is to vote for the party that can deliver because none of these things, whether it's European funding or its influence in Europe, can come from any other party than one with influence in Europe. For the Tories, this vote is again about not surrendering more power to Brussels, opposing the loss of Britain's veto in Europe and above all fighting the Euro. There are huge political and constitutional risks involved in abolishing the pound and at stake could be the British people's democratic power to run the British economy in the interests of Britain. They say no man's an island. Well, they're wrong. But not all Conservatives agree. What's that? More foreign muck. And Haig's views have been parodied by a splinter party. Now it's Paddy Ashdown campaigning in the West Country who's presented his party as the most pro-European, with a strong accent on cleaning up corruption. This time, every single vote is going to count. This time it's on proportional representation, something the Liberal Democrats have fought for for a long time, and that means there will be no wasted vote. And the change to PR is crucial for others too, like the Scottish Nationalists, as well as Plaid Cymru in Wales and the Greens. But in the end, the challenge for all is to persuade people to vote. Turnout is traditionally low, and next week it could dip below 30% for the first time. Joe Andrews, ITN. The value of the European currency, the euro, fell to its lowest ever levels today against the pound and the American dollar. Members of the European Bank have been meeting to decide what action to take to protect it. It's bounced back slightly and a short time ago was worth just over one dollar three and a half cents, down by one percent. And just over 64 pence against the pound, down by 0.6 of a pence. We're returning now to the Kosovo crisis.